Good morning, food students, culinary students at Sun Prairie High School. My name is Ms. Shaneman. I'm here doing with you today measures, equivalents, and halving. So some kitchen math. Um, I am going to go over some stuff on the board. I'm also going to come over to the demo table and we're going to do some things together. I invite you to have some sugar measuring spoons and measuring cups. Um, some kind of liquid, water's fine. I'm gonna use oil today. Uh, liquid measuring cup if you have one. And um, that should be it. Oh, and maybe a little parchment paper or wax paper to put down on your surface. So um, if you need to pause the video and go gather some supplies, you can do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So um, you may have already taken a pretest before watching this video right now. Um, or maybe your teacher is going to just have you watch this video and then do some of the work. So um, here are the measures, some basic measures when you're doing kitchen math and doing a recipe. Uh, the C is a cup. Tablespoon is gonna be a big T or a TBSP. Teaspoon is a little T or TSP. Something I like to teach my kids, my students is the tablespoon is the big one the teaspoon, the littler one here, I'm gonna come up to the video. So tablespoon, teaspoon. Something to know when you're looking at a recipe, if it's the big T, you know it's the big spoon out of the set, okay? Also look at this abbreviation right here. There is a B in it, which I like to have people remember big. The B is for big, okay? Whereas TSP, just has the S in it for small, okay? So tablespoon, big, teaspoon, small. All right, square. If you already took this test, you were probably wondering, why is square on this kitchen math test? Well, chocolate. When we bake, we usually use squares of chocolate. So you can see somebody must have been eating this chocolate or used some already, but you can see it's a square. If I break it off, it's by squares. So your recipe, like for chocolate mousse, might call for a certain amount of squares of the chocolate. Fluid ounces is F-L-O-Z. Pound is L-B. Gallon is G-A-L, gal, hey gal. Pint, PT, quart, QT. All right, I'm going to now jump into the equivalents. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. That's not erasing really well, is it? All right, equivalents. I will be honest with you, I never liked math. Now that I got into the culinary field, I enjoy math more because it's actually applicable to life, to my skills, to what I'm doing. So bear with me. I know this is a lot. When I was a teenager, this would have felt overwhelming to me. So just know I know where you're at, some of you, and um, I feel your pain, okay? <laughs> some of these things you just have to memorize. Um, on the pretest that I've designed, it starts with the teaspoons to tablespoons equivalents and the uh, cup to tablespoons equivalent, which if you can memorize these, it'll really help you a lot in the kitchen. So I suggest just memorizing that three teaspoons equals one tablespoon. Just memorize that. And when we go over and do that um, together with the sugar, it'll probably stick in your head a little bit better. Also memorize that one cup equals 16 tablespoons. If you can remember that, that'll help you a lot with equivalents and with having things. Um, so that's something I highly recommend memorizing. Now, the next one says four tablespoons equals how many cups? Well, if we know there's 16 tablespoons in a cup, 16 divided by four is four, right? So we're gonna be left with a quarter cup. I'm gonna go over how I like to show that for visual people in just a moment. The next one is eight fluid ounces. That equals 
one cup. And so if you actually look at a liquid measuring cup, I have a two cup liquid measuring cup here, but it actually is labeled right there. It says one cup is eight ounces. All right, then, and if you were to put that on a scale as well, if you were to weigh it, it would be the equivalent. And then one pound of butter equals how many cups? Two. One pound of butter, I don't have one with me right now, unfortunately. One pound of butter at the store is usually four sticks in that box. Each stick is a half a cup. So a half plus a half is one, and then another half plus a half is one. One plus two. Um, wow. I just said that. One plus one equals two. <laughs> Okay, I hope I didn't confuse you there. All right, so I wanna do a little visual on the board and then I'm gonna bring you back here to do a little bit of the demoing of these equivalents. Now, again, I told you how kitchen math, just math in general when I was a teenager was very overwhelming. So when I got into culinary, it started making more sense. And then somebody showed me this way to remember um, how many tablespoons are in a cup. And then when we move into the next section, which is the having, it's gonna help you a lot to remember it this way. So what I like to do is I make boxes that represent the tablespoons. So if this is a whole cup, I'm gonna make this into 16 tablespoons. So I have a four by four box here. So if this is 16 tablespoons, that means each one of these is a tablespoon, which also means four tablespoons equals, hmm, if we look at this, one, two, three, four, that's one fourth of this cup. I'm not sure if the video is coming over this way. Let's see this, okay. So that is something to think about that if you do this, each one of these lines is four tablespoons or a quarter cup. So that should help you with the next part, which is having, when you're having a recipe, meaning cutting it in half. When I say having, it kind of sounds funny. So when I'm cutting it in half, it might make more sense to you. All right, so the first one, I also like to draw these a different way too when we're just talking about cups. I'm gonna try to move this this way. So <clears throat> sometimes it's easier also to draw circles that represent a cup. So on your pre-test or your post-test, whatever area you're watching this in for class, the first one on the having is three cups cut in half. So if each one of these is a cup, we could shade each one in half. Oh, that's not really half, is it? And then we're left with one half, one half, and one half. Well, one half plus one half equals one. And then we're left with this half, right? So for you visual learners, that's how you can determine three cups cut in half. You just simply shade in some circles. The next one is four and a half cups cut in half. So <clears throat> I'm gonna assume that we all know four divided by two is two. Hopefully the video is picking this up. So four divided by two is two. So now we're done having that part. Now we got a half this half a cup. So what we could do if you need the visual, here's a cup, right? Here's my one cup. I'm gonna shade in half of it, so I'm left with half of it. This is my half cup, right? Well, the next step of that would be cutting that half in half. So here's my half, I'm gonna cut that in half and I sometimes like to think of a pizza, if this is the overview of a pizza, and it has four quadrants now, right? 
and now we're shading in half of that half, we're left with one quarter. So four and a half cups cut in half is two and a quarter cups. All right. Next one, one and a half cups cut in half. One and a half cups divided by two. Okay. So we're starting with one and a half cups. Okay, but we're gonna cut that in half. So just like the other one, if we cut this part in half, we're left with a quarter. And if we cut the one in half, we're left with a half. So we have a half plus a quarter cup. Um, which when you're in the kitchen, you don't usually have a three quarters of a cup measuring cup. The standard measuring cups are one cup, a half a cup, a third of a cup, and then a quarter cup. So in the kitchen, you're gonna either, if you have to cut one and a half cups in half, you're gonna either do a half a cup plus a quarter cup. Or you could do a quarter cup three times. So a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter. Okay, because the, the answer is a three quarters cup. But like I said, in the kitchen, we usually don't have a three quarter cup measure. So you're gonna have to do the half plus a quarter or a quarter cup three times. All right, bear with me. Next is a quarter cup cut in half. Many of you right away would say it's an eighth of a cup, right? Which you're right, you're right, it's an eighth of a cup. However, going back to my last explanation, do we have an eighth of a cup measure in our standard measuring cups? We do not. There is not an eighth of a cup. Sometimes you might find an eighth of a cup in a measuring set, in a measuring cup set, but in our kitchens here, we don't have them. I know I have a one eighth cup somewhere in the room, <laughs> but usually standard measures, we don't have a one eighth of a cup. So now we have to come back over to our handy dandy grid that I made here. So the problem again is a quarter cup cut in half equals what? Okay, so we have our one cup. This is our whole one cup here. Remember I told you one of these rows is gonna be a quarter cup. So really, if we just look at one of these rows and shade in two of them, because there were four and I wanna shade in half of them, I'm left with two tablespoons. So a quarter cup cut in half is two tablespoons. That seems a little crazy, right? So we have a tablespoon and a quarter cup, and we'll do this in just a little bit. I think I'm gonna make a separate video. So in the next video, when we actually do the measures on the countertop with some sugar. So if you were to fill this two times, the tablespoon two times, and put it in here, that would fill half of the quarter cup, okay? All right, next one is a cup cut in half. Well, if we take our circle, one cup, shade it in, we're left with a half cup. So that's what that one is. One cup cut in half equals a half cup. Um, then I, we already did that one, I think. A half cup cut in half. We kind of already did a half cup cut in half. That was the quarter cup, right? So we have our circle again, shade it in. This is a half cup. If we cut that in half, just like if we're looking at a pizza from overhead, these are quarters. So if we shade half of the half in, we're left with a quarter, all right? And then, ooh, here's the trickiest one of all. Three quarters of a cup, three quarters of a cup cut in half. Remember, we don't have a three quarter cup in our kitchens. So how are we gonna do this? We're gonna go back over to this nice grid that I made 
and we're going to see each one of these as a tablespoon, right? Each line is three quarters of a cup, or I'm sorry, each line is a quarter cup. So if we shade in one of these lines, so we'll just erase that. If we shade one of these in, this is now, we're left here with three quarters of a cup. Okay, which if we counted this, we know that 16, 16 minus four is 12. So if we counted each one of these, there would be 12 tablespoons. So three quarters of a cup equals 12 tablespoons. But now we have to cut that in half, right? This isn't cut in half, this is an equivalent. Three quarters of a cup is uh, 12 tablespoons. 12 divided by two is six. So three quarters of a cup cut in half one of your answers could be six tablespoons. Not sure if you're seeing that. So one answer could be six tablespoons, which if you're measuring out sugar, that might be boring or cumbersome. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, what if I don't wanna do that six times and I wanna break this down even more? Four of these equals a quarter cup. So remember when we looked up here, I erased it now, but one line here equals a quarter cup. Four tablespoons are in a cup. So we could break this down and we could take four tablespoons away from here for our quarter cup and we'd be left with two tablespoons left over. So that is your alternative answer for three-fourths of a cup cut in half. It can either be six tablespoons or a quarter cup plus two tablespoons. Okay, it's totally okay if you're feeling overwhelmed, take a deep breath. It'll get easier, I promise, especially when we do our next video where we're gonna actually look at these with sugar and with measures so that you can actually see what this looks like in real life, okay? All right, I hope this explanation helped you and I hope you all have a great, lovely, fantastic day.